Personalization Group Lead here at Axiom Space. Today is flight day six, and this is our third daily update of the Axiom 1 mission currently underway at the ISS. AX-1 is the world's first all-private astronaut mission to the ISS and represents a critical step towards our Axiom station, the first private space station currently under construction. This mission is comprised of an international crew. Our commander is veteran astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria of Spain and the U.S. Our pilot is Larry Connor of Dayton, Ohio. And rounding out our crew is Mission Specialist 1, Eitan Stibbe of Israel, and Mission Specialist 2, Mark Pathy of Canada. Over the course of their eight days on station, they will be performing dozens of scientific and research efforts, technology demonstrations, and Earth observations. Throughout their mission, they are also participating in a series of STEM engagements and outreach events. Today, the crew marked the halfway point of their mission with a live downlink event hosted by Space Center Houston. During the event, Houston area school students were able to interact with the crew live. My name is Trent. I am nine years old and in, in, in third grade. I know this is a short mission, duration mission. What are some ways you spend your free time? Well, we have a pretty short Simple answer. We don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of our short mission and our uh, heavy uh, science payload, we don't really have much free time. Uh, whatever we do have, we spend uh, just eating our supper or lunch or whatever and, and wrapping the day up. But uh, astronauts here in the space station spend their time doing what, uh, what we all might do if we're at home. Obviously, you can't go anywhere. But uh, if you're at home uh, watching movies or uh, reading, uh, calling uh, friends and family, which we can do through uh, voice over IP here. Um, that's pretty much what I do. So, same kind of stuff. Joining me now is Axiom Space is Jennifer Hernandez. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining. You know, so MLA, Larry, Mark, and Aton are halfway through their mission. Uh, they have covered a significant amount of their objectives, and they're participating in a host of outreach events, just like the one we watched. Yes, they have definitely been busy since the day they docked on the International Space Station, so it's been great to see um, all that they have accomplished until now, and uh, we have a few more days left in the mission, so more to come. Yep, lots of work uh, here on ground as well, and, you know, excited to see what they've got in store for us uh, and you've been kind of helping coordinate uh, all of these on-orbit uh, events with the teams at NASA and the teams here at Axiom. Uh, what range of events you know are they participating in? Yeah, so the range is far and wide. You know, uh, on one side, it's, you know, media engagements. Um, then we have uh, conversations with officials and organizations across different countries and states. And then we, um, you know, all the way into, you know, working with schools and having those conversations with uh, school children. So it's been awesome to see the, the, the range and also just how unique each of um, the events have been. Yeah, and, and you know, to kind of dive into that wide spectrum, uh, you know, what are some of the outreach events that Larry is, has got queued up? Yeah, so Larry has dedicated a significant amount of time on the International Space Station connecting with diver diverse groups of organizations and schools across his home state of Ohio. Um, he has met with scientists at Mayo and Cleveland Clinics, which is two organizations that he's been working a lot with um, the research that he's been doing aboard um, station. And so I had a conversation with them. Uh, he, additionally, he has engaged with K-12 students. Um, one of the organizations or one of the schools that he worked with um, was the Dayton Regional STEM School. And then the other was the Dayton Early College Academy, which is a public charter school with roughly about 1,300 students that um, serves 
uh, different communities, uh, underserved communities in, in Dayton. And then uh, he's also worked with, uh, you know, connected with families and students at the Boonshoft Museum of Discovery there in Dayton, Ohio. So it's been great to see all of his outreach across the state. Yeah, super cool. Uh, you know, and, you know, with regards to Mark Pathy, you know, what kind of events can we see on his schedule this week? Yeah, so uh, first of all, Mark, you know, he is Canada's second private astronaut, and he is 12th, the 12th Canadian uh, going to space. He is engaged in outreach activities with schools and organizations across all of the country. Um, he answered questions from children with the Montreal Children's Hospital Foundation in Montreal, Quebec. This is also an organization that he's been uh, dedicating a lot of his time on station with research with this organization. So that was uh, a wonderful activity uh, to connect with them on uh, from station to ground. Uh, and yesterday he unveiled, uh, you know, a winning piece of artwork that um, was inspired by, uh, you know, just preserving the ecosystem, especially water and, um, and, and also Turtle Island. And uh, this was in part or in collaboration with the Royal Canadian Geographical Society, uh, again, and another organization that um, he's uh, working with, with a lot of the earth observation uh, studies that he's been doing up there. So um, again, another great collaboration uh, and organization that he was working with. Awesome. And, you know, as the second Israeli to fly in space, <laughs> uh, our Eitan's debate, um, you know, he's got a, an enormous amount of support and, um, you know, a lot of people have been kind of tuning into his journey. Uh, what can we expect from Eitan? So Eitan has been busy. Um, as part of the Rakia mission, he is de dedicating 100% of his time on station to, um, you know, education, art, technology, and science. And uh, as part of the Rikia mission, um, the first poems in Hebrew will be read in space. Um, Israeli children, uh, you know, submitted hundreds, thousands of uh, written entries. And uh, he's reading two winning poems. And uh, I believe they were uh, written by both a middle school and a high school student. And then uh, as part of the Rikia mission, four scientific experiments that were developed by Israeli middle school uh, students as part of the Space Lab project will be conducted um, on the ISS. So this Space Lab project is led by the Ramon Foundation, which is the leading educational project in Israel and in the field of space. So really finding different ways to connect with students in several different um, engagement activities uh, across, across Israel. And yeah. then um, here in a little bit, Mark and uh, Mark and Eitan will be conducting uh, an event together in both English and Hebrew. So that's a, that's a nice way to collaborate and, and reach more students and, and those of us on the ground with these activities. Yeah, and what better, you know, to collaborate on the International Space Station right. uh, just really proves how, how great of a community it is up there and how well our crew is working together. Um, it's awesome to see that. Uh, and of course, last but not least, we have to talk about MLA. Uh, you know, what, what has he been focused on? Right, so it's worth noting that this is, uh, this is Mike's fifth time uh, on a space mission. And uh, as the commander of the mission, he really is ensuring the success of the mission from end to end. And this includes, but is not limited to, uh, working with each of his crewmates, right? Um, working with them on their research, uh, acquainting them to the International Space Station, and uh, this does, um, and so it's it's really that that uh, collaboration that he's bringing together for all this. And um, but one of his outreach events um, is a musical performance. It's coming up. It's a musical performance, and uh, it really is to capture the spirit of music. And it's important in education and in learning, and something that he's passionate about. And so excited to see that. So. So again, that range, you know, it, it is there across all of uh, the four crew members. For sure. And, you know, thank you again for joining me and giving us all of that insight. Uh, you know, it's it's been really wonderful to kind of follow this journey of our crew up there at ISS.
No, well, thank you so much. And, and again, you know, there's more to come. Yeah. So. Thanks, Jennifer. And the AX1 crew representing four countries conducting outreach in five different languages have completed their work schedule for today. They have entered their sleep period, and the teams here on the ground are preparing for tomorrow. And for those of you who watch the webcast of AX1, you know that the, as a part of our outreach for this mission, we launched the Axiom NFT store. We released our very first NFT on that same day, and today we dropped two new Axiom NFTs. You can check them out at nft.axiomspace.com. And we will be dropping more over the course of the AX1 mission, including several where the mint is initiated from space. Be sure to visit nft.axiomspace.com for more information. For all other mission updates, we will have those at axiomspace.com. And we'll see you right here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central for the daily update on Flight Day 7. I'm Hannah Lau, wishing each of you and the crew of AX1 a good night.